Our next presenter is Mr. Luis Alejandro Vendan. He has an educational background in business administration, law, project management, and business communication. Mr. Vendan is an independent consultant specialized in international development who works in the U.S. and Latin America for organizations like USED, the Inter-American Development Bank, United Nations, national governments, and private organizations. Through his consulting, firm, uh, consulting office in Southwest Florida, he renders professional services focused in marketing strategy, business communications, public policy analysis, <coughs> economic development projects, and community outreach, often focusing on the Hispanic Latino markets. He is a regular contributor, contributor on business economy and public policies for local media outlets in both English and Spanish, such as Business Currents, De Latino Magazine, and Vista Semanal, as well as Spanish language TV shows. He is also a volunteer he is also a volunteer president of the Council for Hispanic Business Professionals, is a member of the Hodges University Hispanic Institute Advisory Committee, the Collier County Hispanic Affairs Advisory Board, as well as a poll worker on the 2008 primary and presidential election. Born in Colombia, living in Florida since 1999, Luis Bernal is married to Betty, an independent physical therapist. Both are the parents of a six of six year old Mateo, a native Floridian. Let's welcome Mr. Bednar. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's, uh, I'm happy for having the possibility to contribute to the success of the. Uh, Hispanic Institute uh, at this university, not only being an advisory committee, but taking part of the activities and get, uh, uh, getting involved with the community. Um, after you know, the inspiring speech of Miguel, is very difficult, I'm not given <laughs> so full of me to talk about issues. Uh, he's very uh, eloquent in, 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 in issues, in, has the experience of being out there uh, talking to people is not my case. And uh, my point of view or my perspective for this presentation could be seen a little uh, frivolous or uh, like uh, out of touch, but it is the point of view of marketing. Um, ideas, political ideas, political point, point of views are also a product, a service. It, is, can be, it can be like, uh, that's too, uh, mm, again, frivolous, it, it's, it's, it's not important. But uh, Miguel's experience has touched many of the points that marketing people are discovering in the Hispanic community um, and are, are concluding that they are changing. There are lots of things changing of the Hispanic community. Um, when I say uh, Hispanic community, I would like to say Hispanic business, because business in general is not only about money. It's about issues, it's about organizations, it's about dynamics, it's about demography, it's about money, it's about participation, it's about the future. And uh, when we talk about Hispanics, we are in the uh, field of Stereotypes. That's very difficult to me, sorry. <laughs> Everything is about that. Um, on the media, Hispanics are portrayed as good for uh, baseball, soap operas, crime, immigration, uh, rumba, and those kind of things. And that's wrong. Because um, partially, they those stereotypes have no uh, base, but demography is changing little by little, but very consistent. Hispanics are the largest ethnic minority in the United States, but it's the, the one that is growing faster. Hispanics, uh, Hispanic demographics are becoming little by little responsible for the rejuvenation of America, America population and America workforce. Because for uh, 
the last like 20 years, one third of the new workforce population is made up of Hispanics. Um, it, Hispanics is a young population. Right now, they are, uh, most of them are even younger than 18 years old. And uh, that is changing. I, I, I was amazed, I has been amazed in, in this uh, race, uh, the discussions about ideas. I remember one uh, one of the headlines of the news newsweek saying, "Are we heading left again?" And uh, the issues on the campaign don't realize the way that the demographics are changing. What when when Miguel said about the uh, talk about the, the the importance of women. In, in, into the Hispanic community, he's, he's saying something by experience that the, the, the statistics show. Women are more likely to vote, are more, like, more likely to be citizens of the United States, are more likely to be consistent in their positions, are more likely to uh, use communication at all, which is a not treasure for, for politics, and they are responsible for uh, the influence in children. And that's the other point. The young Hispanic population, you know, the, most times education is blamed for uh, one of the reasons Hispanics don't go. But the influence, even if, if immigrants are not well educated, their children are because they are here in the United States. Many of them are born in the United States. Many of them are lazy to speak Spanish. They don't want to. And because are, they are part of the educational system, they got the values. They got the ideas that make American society. So they are an influential force in their parents, not only to buy X, Y, and Z, no only to use uh, any service, but also to buy ideas, positions, and candidates, which lead us to the media. Hispanics are one of the most active groups, ethnic groups, uh, young Hispanics are one of the most active users of the internet. You saw, and I don't want to like, favor any candidate in this, in this race, but in terms of media consumption, media usage, the, I, I would say that, that the campaign that used the internet to communicate, to raise money, was in the right track, in the right track. The other day, we, we, we were talk, uh, making part of a meeting with the, with the sheriff in Collier County, and they said, oh, this is important to you know, to uh, get in touch with, with people uh, by, by phone. And I said, you know what? Most of the young people, they don't use landline phones. They use cellular phones. And as texting is cheaper than calling, they text a lot. And if, if candidates are out of base, you know, out of touch of new technologies, they are out of touch of everything. So that goes to the way that ideas are presented. I would say in terms of ideas, in terms of marketing, typical um, or traditional key factors in American campaigns, I could say party affiliation, religion, race, national security, taxes abortion, government size. Are those the key factors at play right now in the 2008 um, presidential election? I would say no. They are important, but they are not at, at the, at the, they are not the hard factors as the economy, jobs, education, and somehow, well, well, actually healthcare, and somehow immigration. Those are the things that touch the day-to-day -day 
Hispanics. Even if the other factors, like let's say taxes. In this, in this race, everything has been about taxes. Who's gonna be taxed, who's gonna, but hey, if you don't have jobs, if you don't have money to put in, in, in your pocket, who cares about taxes? It's a, it's, it's, it's a matter of being practical, and believe me, Hispanics are practical. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's necessary to understand that there are factors that uh, influence the, the um, uh, Hispanic profile to, to vote. Older people, of course, as everybody, as any ethnic group, try to, to be politically conservative. But remember, most of the Hispanics are very young. Surveys um, or, uh, has, uh, have shown that the, the, the key factors are education, uh, economy, jobs, healthcare, education, the base to control, to political participation. Many of us, especially those who are immigrant, remember what, what Miguel said about uh, political participation in Cuba. Uh, we Colombians, for instance, we proud ourselves of having the most perfect electoral system in the world because 10 or 8 years before we know who's going to be the president. <laughs> so, uh, we don't bother going to the, to the, to the president. <laughs> and that's, that, I know that sounds funny, but in terms of you know, going to, 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 to vote is kind of, I don't, I, 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 I don't bother myself going to, to, lose, uh, to lose my time doing so. But they, there are things in terms of most times uh, the, the supervisors think that it's only about the machines or the, you know, the practical process. But when Hispanics realize that their vote has no direct, direct influence in electing the president, they say, mm, I'm not going to vote. How come we are 45 million of Hispanics? And the, the decision is going to rely on 270 uh, electoral college positions. And by the way, we don't know what the electoral college for. So there are lots of things that, uh, in terms of the, the, the whole system, are not well uh, known by Hispanics. I, I have participated as a poll worker. And I, I know how even non-Hispanics, it was funny in the, the last election, you know, uh, people going to, to the, to the presidents and looking for the, for the keyboard of the machine. What is it? And then he started you know, like, like, like looking for, you no know, trying to, to do the, 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 the table. So it is not only about Hispanics. They are, most voters are ill-informed. Or what, what is going on? And one of the of the things on on candidates is that they tend to uh, remember their uh, voters only when it's time for election. And this is about building relationships permanently. This is not just showing up once once in a while to say, "Hey, I'm Hispanic," because. Hispanics tend to, they are, they are less individual, individualistic than non-Hispanics. So they, they like the candidate that you know, their neighbors like. And building relationships in, in permanent basis is something that is needed to take into account uh, by, by candidates. Um, the main message of, of this presentation is not, this is not about language. This is not about saying um, I, I speak Spanish, uh, English, uh, Spanish un poquito. That's not the point. This is about culture. And it's necessary for candidates to understand that the background of the voters influence very, very strongly their positions. Um, in Florida, with all my respect, uh, Miguel, Cuba uh, used to be the hot political issue. And I said, use. Because even young Cubans are starting to say, mm, I don't care about Castro. I'm American. I'm not Cuban. 
I respect that. I respect history. But in last election, you you, you saw the uh, the advertising. You no, know, two Cuban saying, no, this is two Cuban. And uh, what is the influence of Mexicans? Or new trends in people coming from South America? And candidates needs the, the candidates need to, to know, know that background. So is the when when politicians say this, uh, say that it's too difficult to undertake the Hispanic community, it is, but it's not. Because there are lots of values that are very uh, the same that American community, that American mainstream community. So the message here is know your constituency, know your, your, your voters, get involved. I've seen candidates you know, around here uh, that they are not so Hispanic. They are not uh, so, mm, their culture is not uh, Hispanic at all, but they are all the time with the Hispanics. I have some, some, somebody in my, in my mind, or Collier County, he's all the time with them. If it is the Virgen of Guadalupe, if it is uh, Columbus Day, if it is, uh, it's every time there. It's just like a fixture. And so, so he, he has succeeded representing Hispanics. And many Hispanics say, you know, he's out of touch, he doesn't know anything, but he's, he's there. He's there when, he, when he's needed. And that's something that uh, has uh, no, uh, made him uh, successful. Again, it's about culture. I, I made up a, a, uh, a word for that saying that it's not about Spanish. It's about being Hispanics. Because what the, 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 the degree of um, assimilation is going strong, it's going fast, and immigration by 2020 is going to uh, not to be a, a big issue in uh, in the Hispanic community because uh, American Hispanic American born is going, uh, they are going to be the, the majority. So that's something technology. The role of women, the role of, of, of youth, the role of culture, and the way that um, language is used are on the on the base of how to handle the Hispanic community for elections and for uh, political issues. Uh, it's, it's been I know this the presentation a little know like jumping around. But if you got any questions, uh, we'll be happy to, to talk to you. Thank you very much. here. Um, I know we have a lot of different perspectives, uh, business perspectives, candidate perspectives in the audience. Um, and I'd like to open up sort of a conversation between our panelists and you, our guests. Um, so I encourage you to, to please fill out uh, some cards if you have some questions for our panelists. Um, we have some questions that we had formulated already. Carmen's going to pick up the cards. If, you'll, if you have a question, you want to raise your hand, she'll pick them up, and then uh, we'll sort of uh, handle it in that fashion. Um, first, first question that I have um, is for uh, Supervisor Harrington, um, and I know you, you discussed some of the some of the things that your office has done um, to reach Hispanics in our community. But I was wondering if you could elaborate more on, on, on what you what what are you doing and what's sort of the game plan at this point um, for the going forward basis it should be on i think it's on can everybody hear me yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the things again that we have worked uh, we have done is work very very closely with the Hispanic <coughs> chamber because i think one of the more important things for our office is our community <laughs> outreach program 
uh, for all communities, but especially for the Hispanic uh, community. So just being a presence uh, at a lot of their events, letting them know that we're there to assist them uh, and provide them with whatever information they need, I think has been a great tool for our office in the last four years. And we've seen such a great response from the folks when we do go out to these events. Uh, getting them registered, answering their questions for them, uh, doing whatever we can. I think the community outreach program is probably one of the strongest things we have going for us. Uh, letting people know that we're actually out there and they don't have to necessarily come to us, we'll come to them. So that's one of the, the uh, major programs that we've done. Um, I think we need to provide more education uh, at the school levels, uh, we're trying to work very closely with our um, school board, our board of education, with Dr. Browder, and trying to get more infiltration of elections, um, history, and civics. It's amazing, and and my friend here said he said it correctly. It's not just Hispanics that don't understand the voting process. And that's something that's one of the hardest things for us to do is that constant education. But it needs to start in the schools. It needs to start with our young people at the ages of 16 and 17 before they uh, get to that voting age. So they have an understanding of how the electoral process works from the ground level all the way up because we have many levels of elections. We have our municipal elections that go all the way up to our federal elections. And I think education is one of those. We're more than willing to go into the schools and assist the, the teachers with that project as a, uh, maybe a special class during the semester has come in for a period of time and be able to answer the kids' questions. It's amazing, I get some of my best questions when I go out and speak to a group of young people as far as elections. Uh, it's exciting to hear some of the questions that they have and they have better questions sometimes than the adults. But I think working um, in the education part of it at all levels would also help. Uh, the, the first question I had from the audience um, touches on that on that same question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask it now. Um, again, it is, uh, our proponent here uh, indicates that his, he and his wife are naturalized citizens, and they voted naturalized citizens. They voted in every election, uh, presumably since naturalized. Because the first time they voted, they felt nervous and somewhat intimidated. Uh, the question he's asked is, how can others be made uh, to feel comfortable the first time? Um, what does what does your office offer or do, if anything, uh, to make you know first-time voters, naturalized citizens, feel comfortable with the process? When I first started with the office, uh, the, my predecessor was a fantastic singer. Um, and I said when I got into office, I was hoping that nobody was basing their vote on, on my singing ability because I wouldn't be there. Uh, definitely I'm not a singer, but she used to be able to go down not only to assist with the voter registration once these folks got naturalized, but she was also asked to sing um, our national anthem or God Bless America or something to inspire these people. So she was a very vital part of that naturalization process. Since we don't do those naturalization ceremonies here locally, um, they're detached, we don't have the opportunity to go down and right there, right then and there, the minute they become naturalized, you know, be able to shake their hand and say, you know, congratulations, and here's my card, here's a voter registration application, we are here for you. So we don't have that opportunity um, to be able to do that like we would certainly love to be able to do. Uh, we don't want anyone to ever feel intimidated and one of the things I think is really kind of a, a neat thing that they were doing recently at our early voting site in my main office. Anytime somebody came in and we found out that they were um, voting for the very first time, all the poll workers stood up and cheered and gave them a round of applause. So, you know, just to make them feel like they are really part of the, whether they're young or old. I mean, we have a lot of people that are registering for the first time to, to vote in this election here in Lake County. So I think that, you know, just, uh, you know, it's an educational thing as far as my staff and my poll workers, but not having that ability <coughs> right when they become naturalized. And I think that's something that should be part of the ceremony, whether it's here, if it's done in Tampa or Miami. I think the elections board 
of that jurisdiction really needs to get involved in that process. And I wish I I wish they'd bring it back to Lee County so we could do that. Thank you.